Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. As everyone can see, I have with me Mr. Sanjay Dixit from the Jaipur Dialogues. जो आज हमको थोड़ा सा थ्रेड बेयर करके बताएंगे कि ये क्या हो रहा है पहले बीबीसी फिर हिंडनबर्ग कल रात को जॉर्ज सोरोस मतलब एक एक करके थिंग्स आर कमिंग आउट व्हाट इज हैपनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग वेलकम टू द शो सर नमस्ते थैंक यू फॉर हैविंग मी ऑन योर शो आई रिमेंबर आई यूज्ड टू लर्न क्लासिकल म्यूजिक एंड माय उस्ताद जी यूज्ड टू टेल मी दैट मूरख की सारी रैन और चतुर की एक घड़ी यू नो घड़ी चतुर की एक घड़ी मीन्स यू नो घड़ी इज स्लाइटली लॉन्गर देन सेकेंड एंड लेसर देन मिनट तो चतुर जो है वो एक घड़ी में समझ जाता है सुर और ताल और जो मूरख है वो पूरी रात नहीं समझ पाता तो That's uh, I think something similar. I think that uh, is quite applicable to the situation at hand. Now, I was actually telling people, you should uh, Modi should welcome this opportunity of reviving the memories of 2002 among the people of India because I think that is uh, uh, going to give him a huge fillip. After all, he got elected in 2014 only in the memories of those 2002 heroics. as people thought that those were heroics on his part they don't know that he actually <laughs> tried his best to uh, control the situation uh, but uh, in the people's imagination there were his heroics uh, they put these uh, what is called uh, the trouble makers in place uh, and taught them a lesson for generation that that's that's what the people at large thought and that was instrumental in his becoming the prime minister so if uh, they are going to revive that then good luck to them what else can we say <laughs> so that's what that's why i was wondering why actually they went for uh, taking it off youtube maybe they wanted to ignite more interest in people watching that otherwise people would have ignored that because that's all old hat everybody knows that there's nothing left in it so they were, they were flogging a dead horse uh but then if that is the best that the ecosystem can muster up led by as we can see now by george soros uh, rahul gandhi is only playing a second fiddle he's just dancing to the tunes i guess now we can't dance properly pappu can't dance sala so even if the tune is well set he cannot dance to it kya karega so but the question still arises that the timing is interesting this is the time when india ka jo you know the economy is supposed to be just taking off russian oil is not something new ek saal ho gaya hum log le rahe hain now george soros says bhaiya no these guys are buying russian oil and the adani issue will unravel a democratic revival in india <laughs> no <laughs> i mean I used to think this Jaj Soros guy was dangerous. Yeah, no, I find that he is as comical as his uh, disciple. So which one? So there's so many. <laughs> the principal disciple on his hopes, on whom his hopes rest for 2024. So, but what do what does Jaj Soros want? I mean, he spent. वो बोलते हैं ना कुछ पैसे पूछे भी खर्चे कर रहे हैं इसने सम one billion dollars or something like that to do target India as per se. I mean. हमारे में तो वी नो पुराने जमाने में 200 300 रुपए में वोट बिकते थे तो 1 बिलियन आई थिंक दैट्स दिस दिस गेम गोइंग ऑन यू नो अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हु सेइंग ओके 1 बिलियन 2 बिलियन 3 बिलियन दे आर पॉकेटिंग मोस्ट ऑफ द मनी दैट्स मनी इज एक्चुअली नॉट बीइंग पुट टू यूज इफ इट इज एट ऑल बीइंग पुट टू यूज इट इज बीइंग पुट टू यूज इन मैटर्स लाइक भारत जोड़ो अब भारत को क्या जोड़ो the people who are there in bharat yodo are uh, all past masters of bharat todo so um, uh, i think uh, it's a very um, good money down the drain i mean probably if they had uh, hired somebody simpler somebody maybe uh, e- 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 even from a uh, uh, small town he would have done a better job and maybe he would not have cost them even a million dollars 
but uh, these all i should say that what is it what is it called these are all high fangled hobbies it's their hobby to destabilize elected governments it is their hobby to do regime change so they think that uh, they can pursue this hobby simply by uh, pumping in money but uh, that doesn't work beyond a point after all netanyahu is back after hardly a year after all they got rid of uh, boris johnson only to get rishi sunak mm -hmm. <laughs> from the fry pan into the fire fire and uh, at this rate they are actually you know what they are doing according to me they are bringing in the pulwama effect a full year before the event hmm. so if the pulwama effect could propel modi to 303 then this kind of an effect will probably taken beyond 303 and that when actually his his own core voter is not too happy in uh, the core hindu issues people who care for core hindu issues they are not really too happy but now what will happen is that uh, they will all put all this uh, all their discomfiture all their disenchantment behind them and they will close ranks with modi that is what is interesting sir what they want is not what they are getting why that's my next question sir see these guys are supposed to be very strong philanthropists as they call themselves of course the the world economic forum uh, you know you've got klaus schwab you've got bill gates you've got george soros you've got these big names they've got multi billion dollar organizations one would think that you know as you said they are scary people they have power they've got control they've got this and that one would think so there would be somebody telling them yeah listen this is not going to work you need to find another way of doing things you want to do gauge on to real issues india works on real issues today is this arrogance or is this just like jo what we are doing is correct whatever it is we don't care after that what is it sir actually it's a very curious situation what i find is that in the west the capitalist especially the people who are in the big tech they have become the biggest leftist and that they have done in order to protect their bastions and therefore they put their money all over the world to create monopolies and to create uh, what should i say uh, <clears throat> to create surrogates and uh, india is not something that they can create surrogates easily because india as you said works not only on real issues now there is a thanks to the internet revolution there is a gradual understanding that uh, modernization does not necessarily mean becoming a slave of the west and i think very subtly Uh, narendra modi also pointed that out when he put forth those five resolution during the independence day address and 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 the point number 2 of that is getting mentally decolonized mansik gulami se mukti dr jay shankar i think two days back while addressing a world hindi conference is put it very succinctly that modernization does not mean westernization any more that uh, uniformity doesn't mean just the western values that there is a diversity of values indian society knows how to celebrate the difference they know that uh, the sat the truth or as we call ishwar manifests in different ways it's not a one size fit all kind of a situation so that's something that is beyond the understanding of these uh, western big wigs who are educated in their own binaries i guess so sir because the the entire propaganda they've run against russia is kind of worked in the western country so i guess you know for them it's like 
it's working here why not in india india is these you know uneducated street dwellers what will they know what ha- what's happening so that is again you know this is the lack of understanding of the country but sir i want to bring about one thing the bbc thing when it came out one of the things that we saw the western past didn't say anything otherwise you know one of the state department one assistant super sec- super assistant secretary of state would come out one statement will be there nothing this was quiet it was only the leftist and the islamist side that started screaming about it within india and even abroad which told a lot of us that there is something to do with china then we found out huawei and all that things started unraveling why do you think the west kept quiet sir i think huawei of course is uh, not necessarily the thing because the west can <laughs> latch on to china when it uh, suits them so i won't uh, put too much store by that but uh, i think uh, west was quiet because they maybe uh, they had an inkling of maybe an air india coming and maybe an indigo to follow i think wow we are in a situation that we can actually leverage the economic power this is what has happened that air india that press conference that happened in which you had macron and then of course a statement by biden and by rishi sunak and everybody i think uh, we have now come to the stage where we can now leverage our economic power as china was doing for last two decades that's an interesting statement so but you know one thing you mentioned this in your second response which was very interesting ki ground pay effect now that is something very interesting to me that tells us ki yaar today there is a situation within the country or let me go back about 2 years sir washington post one article would come out and there would be debates people would be ready Where? to debate on english media channels Haan. who watches in english media channels ya yeah, idhar udhar ye wo dan do pura sab kuch aaj same english media channels will not want to even pick up something like that and say yaar yeah, they waste of time chala gaya see if What you see changed? how the english media channels have evolved then you would have noticed that um, over the years uh, they have all shifted their stance they are no longer the center of the left they are either center or center right center right so why is that they so? have a better understanding of the people that they are talking to the people they are broadcasting to than the people who are actually going for their votes even they they don't understand whereas it should be the other way around the people who want the votes of a certain population should understand that population better than those people who are merely broadcasting to them hmm. but it's not happening that something that important. you and i can learn i mean uh, uh, something that um, uh, the good general shankar <laughs> realized and he is very happy about it that he comes to my channel and talks in hindi and his reach has multiplied many fold because he speaks in hindi and um, i remember when i had started the jaipur dialogues it was mostly in english and um, when i started doing some shows in hindi and i saw the response and these days i do about 90% shows in hindi hmm so this that's something that you and i and uh, general shankar can realize but uh, these idiots sitting in the washington post and new york times and uh, what have you they don't realize i mean who reads new york times tell me i don't read i have never read it by who reads washington post i don't read i have never read it only when these days because uh, they these articles they get linked in uh, twitter profiles and in twitter posts so the one sometimes reads them because they come on your timeline otherwise i haven't subscribed to a single one of these you know these big wigs economist and guardian the london times the new york times the washington post the wall street journal not one 
And I think uh, I am fairly well read and uh, well I care yes, about uh, uh, reading a few things. I read about uh, 10 newspapers every day in the morning, even today, when newspapers have become uh, passe, even then. That's because they simply do not cater to our understanding of the world. There are no specialized uh, portals where you can go to. Maybe if you want international relations, you don't go to Washington Times and New York Times, New York Washington Post, New York Times. You probably go to foreign policy. Even uh, if you want to look at uh, business news, maybe a Bloomberg may be preferable. So we have all those choices. Who wants to read all this nonsense? Uh, maybe that suits uh, Rana Ayub. Uh, maybe now probably they will hire Suara Bhaskar also. Uh, now that she has uh, earned a little more of infamy. So <laughs> those are the sort of people that they require. And those are the sort of people people don't require. So they have absolutely no understanding of the Indian mind. What is that Indian mind? I think we have discussed uh, on your channel some time back. Sir, thought process leaders are supposed to be people with their hands on the pulse. And they are shifty, if I may. They are not steady. They are shifty. Because they want to be leaders of the thought process. They don't want to be left behind. So when we see that the leaders, so-called, of thought process, you know, processes which are driving these processes. And India, Mato, sir, at the end of it, you know, they are all useful idiots. There is no question about it. There is nothing beyond that. There is no thought process within this country which is doing all this stuff. There is just Hansji, sir. We'll do this, sir. So these, the group which are called the neocons or new conser uh, you know, uh, conservatives or the globalist agenda as it's called, they're all part of this. This entire gang is part of it, sir. What do they actually want, sir? Um, okay, okay let's, let's understand they want to remove the current dispensation. Then what? Will they be able to control a country by putting somebody uh, of their choice? Uh, precisely. You actually hit the nail on the head. There is a saying in Rajasthani. The Rajasthani saying is that Bina uh, mama se to kala mama acha. Sometimes there is another variation who says that, okay, Andhe mama se to kala mama acha. Kala mama mm acha. -hmm. So a lot of people would be dissatisfied with Narendra Modi. A lot of issues of people uh, think, especially issues of internal security and all. A lot of people who they keep abusing, cursing Narendra Modi day in and day out. But when it comes to voting, then they think that, okay, shall we go back to the Andha Mama? You're getting what I'm saying? They don't want to go back to the Anna Mama or they don't want to be Bina Mama. They want a Mama. So if they have only Kana Mama, then they go for Kana Mama. That is the situation. And these people, they are not providing two eyes at all. They continue with their blind acts. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest evidences of which is this uh, Bharat Todo Yatra, Bharat Jodo Yatra, <laughs> Bharat Jodo Yatra. And I think. Uh, we were having a lot of fun uh, one of these days that, okay, we were discussing and saying that, okay, this is actually sponsored by the BJP because um, no person in his senses would do this kind of a yatra and uh, having the aim of replacing the BJP because everything that is this yatra is doing is actually reinforcing the image in the minds of the people that this guy is Andha Mama and we just don't want to go to him because he's not learnt anything. He keeps uh, parroting issues. He thinks that if he says the same thing over and over a hundred times, then it will get fixed in people's mind. Remember that Chokidar Chor Hai campaign or Abhoga Nyaya campaign. Mm. 
that ab hoga nyay campaign was a straight forward bribe to the people and yet people did not go for it mm. especially in the poorest parts of the country the poorest part of the country as we know in in up <laughs> they got one seat in rajasthan they got zero in haryana they got zero in um, gujarat they got zero in mp i think they got one or mm-hmm. probably two uh even jyotiradit sindhya lost his seat in chatisgarh where they had uh, come with thumping majority they got two so these are the poorest part and in all these places congress drew almost a blank and congress of course drew a blank a, a, a near blank even in west bengal and i don't see anything any change changes happening in these areas even in even in 2024 if anything bjp might win even more in maharashtra they I mean, miss you will uh, reinforce it yes sir you are absolutely right uh, i'm i'm just trying to analyze you see the, when it comes to modi versus rahul even the fence sitters they don't go with rahul in a modi versus rahul situation rahul has uh, not a hope in hell not a hope in hell and uh, now they are going under even in telangana <coughs> andhra of course both bjp and congress are zero but uh, to me it looks like congress is going to go below 30 sir i have this small little thought process and i'd really request your opinion you know you you are observer of indian domestic politics mai i am not that very focused into it mai zyada military geopolitics isme zyada you know focus rehta hai mera sir i personally feel that the domestic politics of this country is so heated up and it is so polarized so that the entire janta of the country keeps looking at that and does not look at the larger picture it is basically in my opinion is a diversion so there are people like george soros and these all these guys who will keep on fingering and keep on creating these domestic political tamashas within the country so that india does not realize its worth you had this air india deal with three, four presidents of countries of the world leaders saying bhaiya thank you so much yaar aapne hamari you know you're giving us a million jobs but you will also have a serious stupid political incident for, so that india is kept away from that sir what do you think about this particular hypo, hypo, uh, hypothesis sir i uh, know i i think this is a, a useless exercise and uh, actually comes from their arrogance as you mentioned earlier yeah. I, just look at the arrogance of uh, george soros what he says that okay uh, because of adani the, the democratic democratic revival will start in india and what has happened okay uh, uh, um, they were thinking in fact i think there is an uh, article in the new york times is it new york times or some other uh, periodical probably new york times where they are wondering why the indian economy has not tanked in spite of a 100 billion loss in stocks by adani yeah, yeah. bloomberg 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 has done this already yes sir hmm. so can you imagine the foolhardiness they is the indian economy or the indian stock market dependent on just one adani <laughs> and those adani stocks are also recovering by the way anyway yeah so, they all back sir they'll be back in the next two months as for and now it's the next two three months they will be back to their old level that is why i bought adani ports <laughs> <laughs> my my first ever stock purchase i did not even have a dmat account now after uh, looking at this they say okay adani shares have crashed i said okay this is a great opportunity we will never get adani shares this cheap yeah so let's buy them while there is a time and because i did not have a dmat account i got delayed 
and I could not buy Adani ports at 390 level. I bought it at about 560. What's touching 600? So oh, it will go back to its old level. It will be 3000 in about a year. You still have time. <laughs> Thanks for the stock. Stock tip is coming, guys. Hot stock tip. Let's let's pick it up. <laughs> I mean, see, that's that's what he's done, and th this is a prime example, sir. You have probably bought it for the factor that, boss, how are they targeting an Indian guy? For what reason? You have no business of doing mm -hmm. something. Like this. Not at all. I just bought it for for um, pure economics. Uh, I mean, I know the, the fundamentals of Adani. Of we know Adani Ports is a hard cash earning cow of the Adani group. And uh, even if you bring it down artificially for a while, it will bounce back. Indeed. It is bound to bounce back. So I am actually making a killing. I am making use of the opportunity. It's pure economic sense. Nothing to do with the Adani's India and all. That's bullshit. I, I don't agree with that at all. Absolutely. That Adani pitch that this is an attack on India. I I don't agree with him because I think Adani also goofed up. He should have had better economic sense. The Dhirubhai Ambani in a sim similar situation had beaten back these uh, yeah, short yeah, sellers. Yeah. Friends of Ambani. Yes. The campaign he, that he, he, he uh, taught them such a lesson that they never touched Dhirubhai Ambani stocks again. They never tried uh, this stunt with him again. So his uh, uh, finance managers actually goofed up. They should have had a better sense at when they were dumping the um, bonds and they were taking short selling positions. And they didn't realize. You know exactly the number of being st stocks being traded every day. Yeah. In fact, uh, uh, the big ones, they, they uh, keep an eye every minute. And yet they were able to, they were not able to force all this. They should have bought all the short selling uh, scripts. All the stock that was being, uh, uh, being sold short, they should have bought it. Then we'd have seen how they would have settled in three days. <laughs> exactly. Then there would have been a complete rush out. And people would have been wondering, hey, who are you? Dhirubhai Ambani, those times, the settlement used to be every 14 days. Yes, sir. Now it is seven every, days. Every alternate Friday. Every alternate Friday it used to be. And he managed to uh, protect himself for 14 days. Yes, sir. And Ambani couldn't protect himself for two days. It's T plus two these days. Adani, yes, sir. That is true. So, but uh, now this was actually goof up by his own finance people. So he shouldn't be saying that it's an attack on India. It was an attack on Adani. The guys who were making an attack, the Indian people, they actually made a lot of money out of that. It was a vested interest. It was a vested interest attack, uh, which they have been doing. Twitter. Actually, I have always wondered why this speculation is still allowed in the stock market. Twitter. How can you sell shares which you don't Elon have? Elon Musk used it. So that is true, sir. Sir, but Mera, I've got two more questions. One is, what does George Soros actually get? I'm sure a lot of other channels will be covering who's George Soros, what all he's done with India before. So I don't want to get into that. My point is, what is he going to get? What does he get? Does he get money? Does he get... What does he get? Uh, I think it's uh, one of those self-obsessed people who think they can change the world. Just because he has the money, he thinks he can uh, run the world or he can fashion the world in his own image and have the world run as he wants. Anyway, now he's too old. He won't survive as somebody was saying that, okay, that uh, I think uh, there's, <laughs> I don't know whether it is fabricated or it is true, but there is a chat GPT conversation going on uh, is, is being uh, <clears throat> trended on Twitter. That says that uh, somebody asked chat GPT, when is George Soros going to die? So chat GPT says that, okay, we cannot predict the death of uh, anybody, but the 
obsession that he has with Narendra Modi, it is highly likely that he will not survive Narendra Modi getting back into a third term. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I think most, most, <laughs> most likely it is fake, <laughs> but then whatever it is, it actually is stating the truth. So this is what India has come out to, you know, within two years, two, two and a half years, I think COVID did a lot of change to India. There was a self-confidence Aya India can the during COVID. Uh, you look at COVID, I, I always say this, COVID is like a, you know, point in the time. There's a time graph, mein, this is a point where China fell down and India started going up. <laughs> because, and you know, if you look at it, COVID was the time India's image literally switched. Now, these yes, guys would have yes, yes, aged 10 years right, because of quite that. Right. Quite right. I think uh, uh, you have to give very high marks to uh, Narendra Modi for handling COVID the yeah. way he did. We can be critical of him in many areas, especially I criticize right. him very heavily as far as internal security is concerned. But when it comes to foreign policy, when it comes to COVID handling, full marks. Fantastic. No so, questions. Uh, our name is so good in the world today. You see, basically, there are three big lobbies, three or four big lobbies in the world. And the biggest of them is uh, oil, pharma and arms lobby. So you can see the pharma lobby, one of the three big lobbies have actually been made to bite the dust. And George Soros followers, disciples like KCR have actually admitted as much that in spite of my telling the central government so much, they did not allow Pfizer to come in. So this George Soros is having uh, incompetent disciples, then uh, that is exactly the kind of thing they will do. He's admitted that he was lobbying for Pfizer and mm -hmm. Narendra Modi did not allow it. And now we know that uh, it was for good that he did not allow it. India escaped so lightly. Look at the Look at the um, havoc that it wrought in the United States and still doing it in China. Uh, I think it was uh, handled in a very, very mature fashion. The Indian pharma industry uh, <clears throat> has got a great flip. It's got great boost in its image the world over. And uh, the stock of India also has gone up because it did not seek to make profit on that uh, calamity, on that global calamity. So all in all, uh, you are right. COVID uh, has been an inflection point as far as India is concerned. So you said four lobbies. You know, you said three. I want to add another one. You said pharma. You said oil. You said military. And I'm going to add the finance slash climate. These are four lobbies. Now, if you look at it, India has got its finger in in the wrong way as per the West is concerned, in the right way as per we are, we are concerned. In all four of them. Yes. So your answer is quite strong, actually. No wonder they're getting after us. Charo mein aap ghuse ho, sir. Pharma aapne apna banaya. Oil aap Russia se le rahe ho. Military aap bol rahe ho, Atman Nirbhar. Finance aap bol rahe ho, humko nahi chahiye saab, humare paas baut paise hai. Climate, achha, thik hai. Hum log solar park bana dete, paanj, das. Solar Alliance bana dete hai. So, I mean, <laughs> no wonder these guys are getting nervous. So your answer is actually very distinct. How do you look at it, sir? Yes, yes, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. Then, <clears throat> India is now actually um, making things happen on, on the global stage. And uh, also talking tough. Especially Dr. S. Jayashankar's reparties and reposts to the West, when especially to these <laughs> these uppity kind of Western reporters, they ask him questions and he gives it back to them in his understated, sophisticated manner. I absolutely love it. 
Oh, question, sir. This is a realization because I think Apka jo akhri, the last answer that you brought about, this is a realization. Four big lobbies in the world and we've got our fingers smack dab right in the middle in all four of them. So there is not one thing going. And on top of that, you're throwing money to generate one million jobs here, one million jobs there, this, that and the other. So their hands are kind of tied. Yes, yeah, so not only that, look at the way that you are actually helping your neighbors who are with you. The way you bailed out Sri Lanka, the way you bailed out Bangladesh. You see, both Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, uh, they have gone for these uh, IMF restructuring mm-hmm. loans mm-hmm. The, and, and the bridging loans. And uh, India has given them guarantees. Because uh, it, it, a lot of credit that they have from India and every creditor is supposed to uh, take up <clears throat> certain assurances, which India has given to them. And on the strength of that, uh, they have got their program sanctioned. I look at Islamabad. What is happening to them? Absolutely terrible. Sanjay, sir, thank you so much. I mean, this was a light conversation, of course. But this was a conversation which is very important in certain philosoph- philosophical things which are happening around us. And especially the last four answer about these lobbies is going to some- make a lot of people think, I'm sure, that this is where India is today. Look at ourselves. Eight, ten years ago, we were a fragile country. People, our joke, we were saying, we were saying, we were saying, but we were saying, we were saying, today it has come to a point we can actually proudly say, Baki Bayman to itna kam hai, but Mira Bharat, Zarur hai Mahan. Absolutely, absolutely. So that is something is, which is. It is generating a kind of self confidence among the people that will actually further propel India into the global stage. Absolutely. Sir, always a pleasure. I mean, I follow your channel very closely, especially the kind of stuff that you do, uh, which is regarding to history and stuff like that. I really appreciate the work you're doing and the time that you've given to me. To have this one wonderful conversation. Always, sir, I will look forward for another conversation soon enough on another nice and interesting topic where we can thread bear certain things. Till then, sir, Jai Hind. Thank you. Jai Hind, Vande Matram. Thank you, sir.